In the introduction video to this series on beat checks, we looked at how to configure your environment to run a beat check and looked at where that output goes as an issue against a target. In this video, we're going to look at constructing a very simple beat check to test something at a host level, right? So for each host, we want to run a check to see if something exists, uh, whether that is a, a sensitive file or a feature or whatever. In our case, it's very simple. We're just looking for the presence of the robots.txt file. Now, what you can do is you can create a beat check from the templates that are available by clicking the new button here. And you'll see that it gives you uh, a large number of options, including the host level uh, template that we're going to be looking at here. Or rather, we're not going to look at this specific template. We're going to look at the one that uh, I built. And uh, it's quite simple. So you'll want to probably, making your first beat check, refer to Port Swagger's uh, documentation. But you may also just be able to make modifications based on the templates. Um, it is fairly intuitive. Uh, there are maybe some elements that are not completely intuitive. Um, this is using Port Swigger's uh, own language or format here. Uh, so, uh, of course, you'll need to uh, conform to their standards, uh, how they have developed the language. And quite conveniently, they've implemented a, a validator. And most of the documentation is pretty robust. There are only a few things I found in going through it initially that were maybe unclear or could be improved in different ways. So this uh, pane right here is giving us a preview of my current B check that I have developed to check for the robots.txt file. And in my opinion, there are roughly three elements of a B check that are essential. The first is the metadata, which um, describes, you know, it, it names your B check, right? And, um, defines what language it's going to be used. There's not much information on the language options. It just seems like the V1 beta is what is presently implemented and what you should select. And then I think the other fields should be quite clear for setting the name and the description as well as the author information. The other element that is crucial is what defines the, what uh, Port Swigger calls the control flow. And that is the given then statement, which you can see here which basically defines what kind of check we're going to be conducting. And finally, I would say that the third crucial element is to have a report issue condition, which determines when you're actually going to report something, right? So what, what defines a, you know, a positive condition for finding what you're trying to find? Now, there may be cases where you want to make B-checks that don't actually report issues. Maybe there are other uses for B-checks. You just want them to send requests and traffic for some reason. Um, I haven't come across those yet, yet uh, just yet, but uh, it very well may, may be the case that you have a use case for those. But I think in the vast majority of B-checks, you're going to want to actually report an issue because you're conducting a scan and you're looking for something, right? You're trying to find a, an issue. You're trying to find a vulnerability in an application. So those are the crucial elements of uh, a B-check, and I'll walk through those right now. So we've talked about the metadata here. Uh, the define is uh, just... Uh, a capability for us to define a variable. So I've created the robot underscore path variable, and I've set that to the string value of forward slash robots dot txt. And then we have the start of our uh, control flow, uh, which is defined per host. So given a host, then we want to do our test, right? So this is where the uh, host-based scanning uh, element comes in, right? We want to perform this check per host rather than you know per insertion point or something else. And in subsequent videos, we'll look at the other types of control flow mechanisms to uh, create a wide variety of different types of V checks. But in this case, we just want to conduct this per host and we're going to send a request and we're calling that request check, right? We've named this check. We can actually name it anything. Um, so I could just open this up here. I could call it check underscore anything. Uh, I just need to find out where it's referenced again. So it's also referenced here when I get its value. Uh, and so as long as I change both of those names, uh, that should be fine. Uh, I click validate and I don't give uh, get any issues. So uh, Port Swigger has included this validate button, which validates the logic of your B check. Uh, I'm not sure what checks it makes and how robust it is to the different errors that might occur in your B checks. Uh, but it is nice that they have included that instead of having to get to a stage where you're running a scan and seeing that your B check is failing. So hopefully that catches a wide array of actual errors. So going back to the logic of the B check. So we're creating a request called check anything. And it's very simple. It's uh, going to be a get request. And for its path, 
I'm setting the robots underscore path. So this format here where the robots underscore path variable is enclosed in curly braces is letting the, uh, it's letting burp know that uh, this is a variable right here, right? So this should be replaced with the value of our variable, which is forward slash robots.txt. So that's all that's needed to actually send this request. So it's going to send a request to robots.txt, and then it's going to capture and store the response. And then we want to interact with that response in order to determine whether our request was successful. So uh, we then have a conditional here. Uh, so there are a wide range of uh, conditionals, you know, the, the classic conditionals that you should be familiar with, with, uh, with uh, any typical um, programming language. Uh, the, they are supported in B checks. And so we have a conditional if 200, it's very simple, just looking for if the string 200 exists in this uh, variable now. And so this variable is referencing now the response object. So we have our check anything request that we've called. Then we're getting the response from it because we've already sent that request in the logic above. And then we're extracting the status code from it. And we're asking the question, is the string 200 in the status code? So this is a very simple check. Uh, we just want to see if we send that request to robots.txt, does the application return a response that says 200 okay, right? That's what we're checking for. And in most cases, that's gonna be a fine check that is probably going to have, um, it's probably going to be very accurate. You probably won't get many false positives from it. That said, it's not a perfect check, right? Because there are applications that return 200 okays for paths and files that don't exist, right? So um, when you're making a B check yourself and you want to make it uh, robust to all of the various ways in which web applications are implemented, you want to think about what you're actually going to see out in the wild and probably it's going to necessitate a little bit more than just checking if you get a 200 okay response as I'm doing here. And we'll look at some more advanced cases and controlling for some of those um, variations that you might see in future sessions looking at p-checks. So we have that condition, if 200 exists in the status code of the response, then we want to report an issue. It's as simple as that. Does the robots.txt page uh, exist? Uh, report an issue so that the tester can go and look at that and say, oh yeah, there's a robots.txt file. Uh, I need to go and look and see if the developers put sensitive paths in there inadvertently, right? And uh, burp itself does include this check. I think by default, it looks for the presence of robots.txt. So this is just a simple example that uh, does not have much utility to demonstrate um, creation of B checks. Uh, but uh, it works and you could use it as a template. So here we have our report issue and we're setting the severity to informational because we don't necessarily know that there's gonna be sensitive information in the robots.txt file. We're setting the confidence to certain here, but uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm actually maybe a little bit more tentative <laughs> about this this one because of the, uh, the way in which different applications behave, uh, but that's okay, we'll keep it as that for now. Uh, and of course, uh, we have a detail item here where we can add details for the issue that's uh, reported so that whoever is actually seeing those issues from the, uh, the scan running can, can read that and uh, understand the issue a little bit better. Uh, and we can also add some remediation uh, text, which uh, of course you're gonna want, want to modify for whatever issue you're making a B check for. Uh, and we can click validate. We see that there are no issues. Uh, to prove that the validate works, I'll delete this final end if um, that's required to close off our um, our if statement here. And I click validate and look at that. It does give us an error. So it's doing something, which is great. Um, and I can just go ahead and uh, add the if. I mean, the, the error information isn't very verbose here. So maybe something to to keep in mind, uh, unfortunately, you know, it doesn't tell us missing if at the end, but it does tell us there's an error. I click validate again after adding the ish, uh, the if, <laughs> and now it works. Uh, I can click save and close. And in order to enable that run, it's as easy as, uh, as clicking the, the check on this B check for it to run during uh, a scan item. Uh, in the previous video, I looked at actually running that. Um, we'll just now go look again at this item here. You'll see that the, um, uh, the check appears as an issue when it finds uh, a file, right? When it m matches that condition of a 200 existing in the response status code. And you'll see that our custom text appears under issue detail, robots.txt, file identified, and our custom text for remediation appears under ensure sensitive paths are not uh, exposed. One thing I noticed that I haven't really looked into quite yet is this path to issue, um, which... Uh, I will uh, examine in a future video when I figure out what it's for and what it does. Uh, but as with other issues reported in Burp, you do have your uh, request and response pair 
And uh, it's very handy because it does highlight what is being checked for both in the request and the response, which is a great feature. And that is how you implement a very simple host-based check within Burp's new uh, B-Check feature.